Welcome to the Vision Drip Basketball Training Podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in today, whether you're an Apple Podcast or Spotify or YouTube. I appreciate every single person who's listening or watching right now. If you are an Apple Podcast, go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the page. If you have not, leave a five-star review. Helps out the show. Helps everything to grow. Uh, gets in front of more people. So uh, that, that really, really helps out. Again, the more people that watch, the better questions we get, uh, the more it's going to help you. So again, I appreciate you guys. Scroll down, leave a review. Uh, if you're on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe if you're new as well. Again, new podcasts every single week. And I'll mention it again at the end, but make sure you have questions for me. Send me a DM on Instagram. I just put a poll out on Instagram this past week asking for questions. And uh, you guys asked me a ton of questions, so got some stuff going forward. Uh, going to do a QA and a at some point as well, so be ready for that. But appreciate all you guys asking questions and all that because, again, everything comes off the questions that I that I, that I I get, and uh, including today's episode, uh, which we'll hop into right now. Um, so I got a lot of questions on my Instagram poll about ball handling and dribbling and all that sort of stuff. So I kind of want to make this, this episode devoted to that and kind of my, my thoughts on how to, on how to train ball handling, how to improve it, uh, where it factors into your game and the, the, the steps you need to take going forward if you want to become a great ball handler. And, you know, uh, just so you guys know, as of the time of recording this, well, actually, as of the time you guys are going to see, this will probably come out on a Sunday. Um, Elite Ball Handling, which is my ball handling program, is coming out. Uh, w- when you guys see this, the next day on Monday, so Monday, August 17th, Elite Ball Handling is going to be open. And essentially what it is is going to be a six-week program where you're going to go through different ball handling workouts and they're going to target uh, the, the skills we're going to talk about today. But really, you know, if, if you struggle with your confidence with the ball, if you struggle with handling pressure, you struggle with being able to create with the ball in your hands, being able to create off the dribble, uh, being able to control the basketball and not lose it, all those things that, you know, if you struggle with those things, this ball hand program is going to be a massive game changer for you. Uh, I've spent a lot of time, talked to a lot of people about, you know, kind of the stuff I'm, I've been developing with this over the past few months. And uh, so I'm really excited to get it to you guys. It's it's really, it's, it's something that's going to take your, your ball handling ability to the next level. And we're going to dive in today to why that is because, you know, a lot of times players have a misconception of what actually ball handling is and what it actually entails in terms of, of getting better. But what I love to do is I love kind of diving into things, diving into like, you know, the, the why behind why we do things. You know, why do we do this drill, right? Like, I don't want to just do a drill because that's what everyone who has ever played basketball has done for however many years. Because every coach, you know, that you had grown up in elementary school, middle school says do this drill. Does that mean that that like, why are we doing that drill? What's the reasoning behind it? I think that's what players need to ask themselves when it comes to developing your ball handling. And unfortunately, there's a lot of just uh, there's there's a lot of things, a lot of stuff out there that players do that I feel like you could get better results doing different things. And again, doing the research I've done over the past few months um, and, and just working myself, working with, with players that I work with as well, uh, I've seen a, a ton of improvement. So again, if you guys are looking to take that part of your game to the next level, this program is going to be something you guys are going to want to check out. So again, make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at Vision Driven Basketball. I'm going to post about it as soon as it's live on Monday at midnight. It'll be so Sunday, you know, so Sunday, 11:59. Boom! As soon as it's 12 a.m. Monday morning, that that program is going to be live. You guys can grab it, and there's going to be a discount for the first week. So if you guys grab it the first week, you're going to get it for a lower price. So be prepared for that. Um, and again, you know, summer's getting towards the end. Um, now is really the time where you guys need to, to to buckle down and get yourself prepared for for the this preseason. So. You know, no better way to do that than, than getting kicked off, starting ending your summer the right way, and bringing that momentum into your fall. Um, so I'm I'm super excited for this next week upcoming to see the the, the stuff. As I know, I've gotten a lot of DMs, a lot of comments from you guys who are excited to get going with the program as well. So um, I'm, I'm here for it. But you know, I got a question. Actually, I got multiple questions in that Q and that Q and A on Instagram I did about ball handling. So I wanted to kind of answer those specifically. And the one of the questions I got from John, he asked. How does dribbling help your game? This is kind of a uh, kind of a, a broad question because I think you could take it a couple of different ways. But you know, I, I kind of wanted to move it towards something. So you know, essentially, kind of off the bat, when you can handle the basketball, it, it just gives you another level of freedom on the court, right? Because now all of a sudden you're able to go where you want and you're able to take advantage of those opportunities that 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 are presented to you. 
And when I say opportunities, what that means is that if you have the ability to handle the basketball, there's going to be some certain things you can do on the court that you would not be able to do if you weren't able to handle the basketball. Okay. If you can handle the ball well, you might be able to, to drive into the lane when there's another person in there and you might be able to finish a layup right there. Okay. If you can't handle the ball at all, then you might, you might not be able to do that. You might have to settle for the outside shot. You might not be able to drive into the paint. Uh, you might have to pass the ball. So there's all of a sudden a scoring opportunity you're going to get because you have the ability to handle the basketball. And that's a real, real basic example, but that extends throughout way more, right? So if you can handle the basketball, maybe your coach designs pick and roll opportunities for you, okay? So all of a sudden you get to be the ball handler in a pick and roll. You get a bunch of looks off the pick and roll. You might get some jump shots off that. You might get to the rim. Uh, you might There's a ton of reads you're going to make. You might be able to hit, hit, uh, get a lot of, a lot of passing, uh, be able to drive and kick, do all those things, you know, get to the free throw line. You're going to have the ball in your hands a lot more, meaning you're going to get more opportunities because your coach knows – you know, hey, I trust this guy with the ball. I'm going to get it to him. He's going to make a play with it. Okay, so being able to handle the basketball is going to give you freedom, but it's also going to give you opportunities as well. So those are two things to keep in mind. You know, I'm a firm believer, and I've done a whole podcast episode on this, but I'm a firm believer that shooting is the most important skill in the game of basketball. And, you know, while I stand by that, I think that ball handling is, is probably a close second to that. And honestly, there are people out there who probably would 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 – argue ball handling above shooting for various reasons now i disagree that it's above shooting but i can i can understand where people are coming from when it's when they say that because ball handling is incredibly important and while shooting is is for sure important you also have to be you consider the fact that when you can handle the basketball that's going to get you more shooting opportunities okay if the, if the defender knows like okay this guy can, can blow by me he can drive by me he has the ball control he he's able to change his pace well he can get by me I might have to give him a little bit of space and I might have to, I, I might be more susceptible to, to going for his little fakes, right? That might give him an opportunity to get by me or to back, to get me to back up enough for a shot right there. That's going to play to your strength as a shooter, right? If you can put the ball on the ground a little bit. And, but I, I don't want that to be like, bottom line, it's not just, just that. Okay. I think there's more that goes into it as well. You know, another aspect that I want you guys to think of is, you have to consider your position and your role as well, okay? You know, 95% of players are not going to be asked to dribble the basketball as much as Kyrie Irving or Trey Young does or, or Chris Paul or Steph Curry. These guys who have the ball in their hands, you know, think about James Harden. James Harden is going to take so many dribbles throughout the game, okay? Most players aren't going to be asked to do anything near that with the ball in their hands, okay? So th there might be a few who may, but even the point guards are going are gonna, to – not, their coaches are not going to want them to be dribbling the ball as much as those guys might dribble the ball in an NBA game, okay? But you have to consider that that's also going to affect the way ball handling is going to affect you personally, okay? That being said, you don't just need to be a point guard to need those ball handling skills, okay? And we can kind of break that down as well. You know, the majority of players aren't superstars. The majority are not. The majority of players are role players, right? You might have one or two guys on a team that are like the guys and then everybody else on the team has to play a role, okay? Now, your role might be to go out and score. Maybe that's your role, but your role might be to go and be the point guard. Your role could be to go get rebounds. Your role might be to play defense. Your role might be to be a spot-up shooter. Whatever that role might be, there is a there are ways that your ball handling is going to make you more effective in that role, even if you might not kind of realize that right off the bat. The ability to put the ball on the floor and be confident doing that is going to add another aspect to you as a player that's going to make your team a lot better and it's going to allow you to, to thrive in that role even more and probably even expand your role, okay? So let's kind of break it down, right? If your role is, you're, you're a catch-and-shoot guy, okay? You know, you, you're catch-shoot, spot-up shooter, off-driving kicks. You Maybe you get, they set a lot of uh, pin-down screens for you. You know, you're a shooter, okay? If all of a sudden you're able to put the ball on the floor too, you're confident driving to the basket, you're able to break down your guy one on one, or even if he's just overplaying you, you're able to, to to rip through, go by him, maybe help a defender steps up. You can go with a quick between the legs and finish, right? Just real simple stuff. That's gonna add a whole other dynamic to the way that you play. So whereas before, the other team might say, okay, that's their shooter. We're just gonna put a guy right up in his face. Now, if they respect your ability to put the ball on the floor, they have to give you that space now. So now they're going to play you differently coming off of screens. They're going to ha they're going to be forced to be less aggressive playing you on ball, meaning you're going to get to do your strength more, which is shoot the basketball because they're going to have to respect that you can do more than just that. Okay? And 
that's just one example of, of being able to do that. And you know, what you can also consider is like if you're a big, right? You're a big man. And the majority of the time you're playing inside, you're getting rebounds, maybe you get a couple post opportunities, maybe you get some dump offs off of drives, uh, maybe you set a lot of ball screens, all those things that a, a traditional big man is gonna do. You know, if you're confident being able to put the ball on the floor a little bit, that's gonna change that that's gonna expand the the impact you can have on the game as well. Because now all of a sudden your coach might say, Okay, you know what? He he's a big, but He's confident with the ball in his hand. So if we see a mismatch where maybe the guy guarding him isn't confident playing perimeter defense, maybe we space him out a little bit, get him the ball, and then let him go to work on him, right? So now you get another, like we talked before, you have more opportunities now, okay? You're able to to have the ball in your hands a little bit more. Your coaches trust you more. Your teammates trust you more. And basketball just becomes more fun at that point, right? Because now all of a sudden you're expanding your role and you, you're becoming better just because of you're adding in this one skill of ball handling to that. OK. And to me, that's really where, where, where the importance of ball handling comes in is what exactly it adds to your game. Not in terms of just ball handling may never be your, your go to thing. Right. Like me as a player and the majority of the times if I'm playing like I'm looking to shoot the basketball. OK. I, you know, that being said, I can put the ball on the floor if I need to. Right. If I need to get somewhere, if if I'm being overplayed, if someone goes for a shot fake or a jab, I can put the ball on the floor and I can get into something real quick off the dribble right there, right? I'm not Kyrie Irving with the basketball, right? And that's because I don't need to be, right? I don't, I don't need to be Kyrie Irving. I'm going to play my role, but I'm able to expand what I can do in my role because I feel comfortable and confident that I can, I can, I can do that with the basketball, okay? And that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about with this as well. It, it, it comes, you know, you think about this in all sorts of opportunities and you can even, you know, you can think just right now, how would ball handling, how would, how, would, how would it increase in your ability to handle the basketball? How would that impact your role right now? Okay, so, you know, if you're playing, if you're in high school right now, right, think about how, what your role was last year, okay? And think about what it would, what, what it would be like this year if your ball handling was better, okay? If you're going into high school, right, think about what you could do, what you could accomplish with, it, with, a, with more ball handling ability, okay? Let's think about with a press, right? Let's say you're that spot up shooter. Let's go back to that spot up shooter example, and you know you've never really been comfortable. You know when you're getting full court press, you don't like putting the ball on the floor. Okay, teams like to trap you because they know like hey, this guy's not comfortable with the ball in his hands. If you all of a sudden become comfortable with the ball in your hands, what, what, how does that change things for you? Well, now all of a sudden your coach can keep you in there for a press, right? You're gonna have the ball in your hands more often. Okay, you're gonna have more of those duties as well. And again, once players start to overplay you, you get by them. You're in this transition kind of break thing you're getting more more easy points because you're able to be in there, you're able to be effective. And again, that's another aspect to your game that you can add right there, okay? And, you know, if you're a big, you're a big man, you might not you might not be asked to put the ball on the floor all that much. You might say, "Why, well, coach, why would I need to be able to handle the ball?" Well, now if you have a great you have a great grip on, you know, your ball control and, and your ability to manipulate the ball, you're going to be much more comfortable putting the ball on the floor when you're, you know, inside, when you're maneuvering in the paint, going into your post moves or whatever your finish is. There's those little quick things. Okay. So it all kind of comes full circle right there. Right. And we can look at a guy like, like Nikola Jokic, right. So with, with the, uh, with the Denver Nuggets, you know, that's a guy who's a, a traditional seven footer uh, is just based on how he's built. Like it's built to be an inside, you know, paint player. But and, and you know not he's below average NBA athlete. He's not a good athlete f- in terms of NBA standards. Okay, he should be a back to the basket rebounder and screen setter. That's what he should be. But because of his skill, because of his ability to handle the basketball and to pass, right? But I don't even want to talk about it because he he can shoot the ball, uh, he can pass. But his ball handling is where that really it stems from. He's able to play point guard at times because he's so good with the ball in his hands. So now all of a sudden he is the he is he is the centerpiece of that Denver Nuggets team because he literally can do every single thing on the floor, right? He's your biggest guy, okay? And at the same time, he's one of your most skilled players. So he's able to have a whole different role. So as opposed to him, you know, just being a guy who gets rebounds and maybe gets gets uh, you know some some shots or whatever, he's able to get the all these triple doubles and he's a guy that defenses have to play differently because they're like, okay, this dude can do this dude can put the ball on the floor, he can pass, he can do those little things. So now he's expanded his role as not just a big guy, now he's he he does everything for them. Okay? So and that's with again that's with below average athleticism. And and he's able to do all of that. So 
that's where basketball is today, right? That's where it's going. That's where it's it's been going. Uh, and, and every single year, it continues to progress more and more to positionless basketball. And everybody has to be able to handle the basketball to an extent. Okay, it, it's not a time where you know you can have your point guard and your shooting guard. They can be the guys who can do that, and then but really just your point guard. Your shooting guard's gonna do it if he needs to, but. You know, your, your, your other three guys are like, eh, I think I'm going play off ball. No, like, today, everyone's got to be able to handle basketball, no matter what position that you play. And if you feel like you don't need to, well, probably what you'll find is that if you were able to handle the ball, you're going to get a bigger role. You're going to be able to do more in your role. And you're going to get more playing time. And the coach has got to put guys in who are going to make plays, okay? And, you know, as a coach, my ideal situation for, for any team that I coach is I want to be able to put – Five guys on the floor who can shoot the basketball, who can handle the basketball, and who can defend at a high level, right? I don't care what position you are. I don't care if you're a big. Now, you need size, obviously, so you hope that your big guys can can do those things, okay? But if I have to start five guys who are 6'5 and taller because they can all do those three things, then cool, right? I, at these, like, these days, like, those coaches will start a seven-footer if he's their best point guard. Okay, that's how basketball is today. So we want to make sure that, that, that you have those, those abilities. And I think ball handling is such a crucial aspect to that because it makes every single team better when you have guys who are comfortable with the ball in their hands. Right? Defenses can't key in on one guy. You have multiple guys who can make plays, who can, who can run things, who can get things set up, and, and that's kind of how it all goes. So, again, consider that. You know, I also talked about this in, in my uh, video that I posted on YouTube a couple days ago talking about you know, the ultimate guide to becoming a better ball handler. And we kind of broke down the four main areas of, of ball handling uh, that, that I really have been focusing on. And that, again, elite ball handling, the program really heavily emphasizes these four points. Because I think if you can master these four things, you can be very, very talented with the ball in your hands. Number one is ball control. And ball control is where everything, all these other points are going to come from. If you can't control the basketball, then, then the other three, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to do those things effectively. Okay, so it all comes with, can you keep the basketball in your hands, and can you be trusted with it? Can your coaches trust you to control the ball? Can you, can, can you trust yourself? Do you have the confidence to go out and hold on the ball? Okay, and, you know, th- this is going to, uh, when we talk about ball control, there, there are specific parts of it, uh, specific pieces that we can look at that actually make ball control, that, like, make up ball control, essentially. So, Basically, your ability to dribble the ball hard, okay, your ability to, to get the ball to the floor and back to your hands as, as hard as you can, that, that is one aspect of ball control. Okay? You don't want to be somebody who dribbles the ball real lightly, real, real weakly, because there's more space for that ball to get stolen from you. Uh, it, it, again, it's going to be out of your hands for longer. You're going to find it more difficult to be able to get into things quickly. right? If, if someone jumps, jumps the ball or, or jumps on you as you're dribbling the basketball, you can't dribble it hard. Well, you might not be able to re- to react fast enough to to do anything with it. You're gonna lose the ball. You're gonna not be effective with the basketball in your hands. Okay, so that's one thing to consider. Also, you need to consider your ability to get into moves quickly. How quickly can you get into your between legs dribble? How quickly can you get into your crossover? How quickly how quickly can you get into your between legs behind the back? Right. So that's another aspect of ball of ball control that we need to master if we want to actually uh, get to a point where we are confident and great at controlling the basketball. And then. We also want to be able to play with the ball outside of our frame. Okay, so one draw I love to do that 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 helps with this is is wide V dribbles, right? Where we're gonna have the ball, we'll say in our right hand to start off, and we're gonna dribble it, you know, out towards our knee with our right hand, and back out towards our left knee, all the way across, getting trying to get it outside of our frame, and then we push the speed with that. We can add in different combos or whatever to that, but just the ability to go to the outside of your frame with that right hand, or then when we switch hands, go to the outside of your frame with your left hand. That's going to help you to become so much more confident in your ability to control the basketball because you can handle the ball wide, narrow, anything in between. If you play basketball, you'll understand that there's going to be a lot of times where that basketball is not going to be right in front of you. You have to be able to control it when it's outside of your body. Okay, and that's something that players struggle with a lot because it's not a lot of times it's not something that they focus on. When they do their stationary ball handling stuff, it's all narrow moves, right? Pound dribbles, crossovers that are right in front of them. Behind the back is right in front of them, like or right behind them. Between the legs is like real narrow, right? And that's something that that I talk about a little bit in that video. And 
that's but it's super important that we're able to handle that ball outside of our frame so that, again that's a drill that i like to do for that and then manipulating the basketball is, is the fourth point i want to make about ball control your ability to 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 kind of hang the ball uh and be able to to move it where you want to move it right so exactly if, if we talk about you know your ability to go into an in and out dribble for example that's mani- that's manipulating the basketball Right, a normal dribble where it's going kind of up and down with it, whatever it might go crossover or pushing it. Okay, but now we're taking it and we're able to to kind of not ca- carry the ball in a sense of like we're moving it in the air. Obviously, you can't pick up the ball underneath it, but we're able to m- manipulate the ball in the air, and that gives us more control over it for a longer period of time. And if you watch guys play at any time, you know, even if it's like you see guys going into a retreat dribble, right? You're retreating from the defense. That's manipulating the ball right there. Okay. Guys, when they play off of the pick and roll, if you watch guys who are elite off the pick and roll, you'll see them manipulating the basketball the entire time. They're slowing down their pace with a the dribble. They're they're holding it for longer because they're able to kind of manipulate it and, and, and hold it and keep it with them. So that increases the, the amount of time you're able to control the basketball as well. So those four things all go into that. And when we talk about drills that develop those things, again, you know, I like to start off with drills. The one thing I'll say is when you're doing your ball handling drills, you want to make sure you're, you're, you're drilling the ball as hard as you can. Okay, so you know, if you guys check out my uh, my my video I put out on ball handling like, like two days ago, there's a workout at the end of that video, and throughout all of those drills, you want to make sure as we're starting off with those manipulations, pound that ball as hard as you can the whole time. That's going to develop your ability to to drill the ball hard, keep you know, minimize the time from the floor to your hands, and you know, something that that I always that I always say and coaches always say that the kind of cue you can use is you want to try and break the floor. Right when you're pounding that basketball, especially in those stationary drills, you want to try and break the floor. Okay. The other tip I'll give you guys is when you're when you're doing those kind of stationary pounds, you want to use your entire arm. That includes your shoulder as well. So it's not just something where you're just using your wrist to dribble the basketball or just use your elbow. You want to use that entire shoulder, elbow, wrist, right three, all three joints. That way, you're going to have the maximum amount of power you can have on those dribbles, and that's going to help you to to. Uh, be able to move the ball faster, pound it harder, and again, get better at moving that ball quickly. So then when we talk about moving the ball quickly as well, that kind of goes along with that, but how quickly are you getting into those crossovers? So we, if we go back to that, that manipulation dribble, that, that manipulation drill, we're going to go into those manipulation dribbles and we're going to go into a crossover, right? How quickly can you go through that, right? Can you go through those three those three pounds and then that quick crossover, Right. So when you're doing drills like that, you want to be able to push your speed as well. I think that these two things especially apply during stationary drills. Okay, so if we're doing, you know, we're doing our wide view dribble series, we're going to try and pound that ball and go as fast as we can, and then we're going to get into our combinations. We're going to do those as fast as we can too. So now we're developing our ability to, to pound that ball as hard as we can, and also we're able to get into those moves quickly and go through this whole the whole drill quickly. So all of a sudden, those two aspects of ball control, we're targeting those when we start off with that drill. Okay. Then we talk about moving the ball outside of our frame. I kind of talked about it with those wide V dribble series, but also there's gonna be plenty of drills you can do. Uh, there's another drill actually in in the the YouTube video I posted two days ago in that workout where we're going into our shifting is high to low series, and it's another it's another aspect where we're another time we're working on that aspect of being able to hold the, you know put the ball outside of our frame and then back to it. Right, we're up high and relax. Boom, we drop down, double crossover, balls outside of our frame. Now we're back into it. Okay, so that's another drill you can use to, to improve that part of your game as well. And then manipulating the ball, really simple. Manipulation drill uh, is my favorite. You can also go front to back manipulations, which we do in elite ball handling. But if you guys check out the video from a couple of days ago, you'll see the the, the uh, manipulation drill that we that we go through, the series we go through. And uh, again, that really is going to help you guys improve your ball control immensely. One of my favorite drills ever because literally, as we're talking about it, that works on basically every single aspect of ball control except for maybe being outside of your frame because it's not quite but it's still pretty wide because you're still getting that ball nice and wide you see my feet nice and wide i'm getting low so i'm still moving that ball pretty far but it kind of hits every single aspect of ball control right there so that's a drill you guys do that every single day you're gonna immediately see improvements in your ability to handle the basketball and control the basketball so i highly recommend you guys check that out again if you haven't watched that video yet Go back to my channel right now. Check it out. The Ultimate Guide to Becoming a Better Ball Handler. It's a full breakdown and a workout as well. You guys can go through it. It's going to target all four of these as well. So even if you guys don't end up getting the Elite uh, the elite Ball Handling Program, that workout's going to help you guys out. So 
Number two, okay, we went over ball control. That's aspect number one. Okay, we have four total ones. So number two is your ability to change your pace. Okay, and this is such a crucial part because there are so many players who might be really good athletes, but they're always going 100%, right? It's either they're going zero or 100%, okay? You have to learn how to play and, and know when to change your pace, when to go fast, when to go slow. What moves can you use to slow yourself down? So in, in the video, the workout from a couple of days ago, we went through a drill, the three-cone drill, where we're starting and stopping at those cones. We're going to be able to go from explosive 100%, slowing down into a hesitation, and then boom, we're back into it to that next cone. Okay, in elite ball handling, we also work on a closed stance hesitation. So if you look at Isaiah Thomas, and I'm sure a lot of you guys who've seen Isaiah Thomas know the move I'm talking about, where he's going to kind of close him, like he's going to he's going to go into kind of a closed stance, and then as the defender relaxes, he's going to explode off that back foot and attack. So it's like a really weird looking hesitation, but it's so effective because he slows himself down. It looks like oh, he's about to close himself off. He's probably waiting for a ball screen or whatever, and boom, before that that foot hits the ground. He's exploding. Okay, that's another move that we work on in elite ball handling. And we have a full breakdown. So um, workout six, I believe, is what it is, where we break down that move, and then we add that into that three-cone drill that we were doing. But essentially, what that three-cone drill does is it allows us to learn, to learn how to change our pace quickly. Okay, it gets us just comfortable with that change of pace. Okay, there's so much we can do with change of pace and a lot of stuff that we do with it. But that three cone drill is so great because it's so basic, but it really primes you and it gets you in in, in the uh, it really gets you comfortable with changing your pace. A lot of times players just don't practice changing their pace. Every ball handling they drill that they do is at 100%, which, again, there are times for that. There are times where you need to go 100% for your ball handling drills. But there are some times where you should be able to switch up the pace that you go at, okay, so that you can work on being able to do that in actual games. So that's super important. So, again, check out that video if you guys want to see that drill as well. And then the third point we can make, the third aspect you want to, to develop is your ability to change your height. Okay, changing heights when you're dribbling the basketball. And this can be getting lower or getting higher. And there's reasons to do both. So when we talk about getting low, something I want you guys to look at in that workout that I posted is just how low my feet are. And for any of you guys who have been a part of our live ball handling workouts on YouTube, you've heard me say it where I say, guys, you can get your feet wide here so you can get nice and low. Okay, if you watch guys play basketball, right, if you watch uh, somebody attack off the dribble. You know they, they break somebody down and go. Watch how wide their feet are and how low they are. If you watch James Harden go into one of his little size ups and then blow by somebody, look at how wide his feet get, and then look at how low he gets because of that. Okay, so we need to be able to train our ability to get our feet nice and wide. That's gonna drop our hips for us, put us in a more advantageous situation to be explosive. And, and being able to do that, going from that high position to that low position, is going to allow us to be explosive and get by our defender, put pressure on them, make them foul us, whatever it's going to take to get and make some plays. Okay, But at the same time, it's not just about getting lower. Okay, Getting lower is important. And again, we did that shiftiness, high to low crossover drill. Uh, that you can see in that work in, in the work of a couple of days ago as well, where we work on going from a high position, high and relaxed, to boom, low and quick on those double moves. Okay, but also it can be effective to raise up because what raising up is going to do a lot of times is it's going to make your defender relax himself as well. Okay, if you guys watched that video I posted, you guys would have seen the Jason Tatum clip where he's he's driving, he he's in the lane and he he goes into that little closed the close stance hesitation dribble against, I believe it's Brooke Lopez or maybe Robin Lopez, one of the Lopez brothers on, on the Bucks. He goes into that and then Lopez raises up. He's like, oh, you know, JT, he's raised up. He's in his close stance. And then boom, Jason Tatum explodes right by him, right? So Jason Tatum raising himself up, changing his height, causes his defender to be like, okay, I'm, I can relax a little bit. And then boom, he's able to quick get back, blow by him. Okay, that, that's the kind of thing that, that, again, that's why I say that, you know, a lot of times ball handling, players kind of go about it the wrong way. They think like, if I do my little stationary ball handling drills every single day, then I can just become great at it. And that's part of it. Again, we talk about ball control. That's part of it. But also these change of pace, changing heights, like that stuff you develop through, through actual targeted work on that sort of stuff. Okay. So that's something we actually have to train, right? You don't want to just ignore that sort of stuff because for exactly what I'm talking about right now, little details of the game that you might not even think of. Okay. Those are very, very important. And then the fourth point I want to make, and probably the most overlooked part of all of this stuff, is creativity. And creativity is so huge because, you know, I always talk about it. 
there is never going to be two plays that are exactly the same in basketball, right? If you, you might be in a game and you might have two similar situations, but there's always going to be some sort of little difference that's going to make that play a whole new set of circumstances. You know, I talk about basketball being a game of solving problems, okay? How, how the, the players and teams who are successful are great at solving new problems that they face, okay? That those problems might be, how do I react to this defender, right? How do I, you know, uh, how do I hit this shot from here? You know, if my defender plays me this way, now what do I do, right? If their team comes to press us this way, what do we do? How, so your ability to solve problems is going to directly correlate to your ability to be successful because basketball is a whole bunch of new problems that you're never going to see twice. So how are you able to improvise? Are you able to adapt on the fly and overcome those little things? That's where creativity comes in with ball handling. Okay, if you watch guys who might make moves, you're like, man, like, how do they do that? Like, how do they even practice that, right? You watch a guy like Trey Young is one of those guys who I watch, and I'm like, man, this dude is like, how does he even, how is he able to do all that? But you look at him, and it's really his ability to be creative with the basketball in his hands, okay? So there are there are times where, you know, he may get, you know, he may get a double team thrown at him, okay? But he's able to to go into some sort of move that the defense doesn't even see coming because he's worked on that on that ability to 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 really have a an answer for every problem that could come his way, and that makes him incredibly difficult to stop, because you don't like, no matter what you do to him, there's something he's gonna do back to you, okay? And that's where creativity comes into play, and and why I think it's such a, a crucial part of your development, and you it's not something you should be ignoring. So kind of one thing that that. I really worked hard on developing a lot in elite ball handling is creativity. Like we do creativity stuff in every workout. Every workout there's going to be creativity stuff. So if you guys saw in the video a couple of days ago, we had that that full court creative freestyle. So we have a lot of stuff like that in there where we're going to work out of different situations. Um, your, your ability to be creative and switch up your moves. And that's where you kind of add all these three things together, right? You're going to, that's going to, that's going to stress your ball control. But it's also, also going to stress your ability to change your pace. Okay, you're going through your, your freestyle. You got a defender on. You got to be able to change your pace. Okay. Also, you can change your height as well. So I'm up. I'm high. I'm relaxed. Boom. I'm quick, low, and explosive. Then I go. Okay. It targets all three of those things and allows you to kind of just shut your mind off and just play basketball. Okay. I, I did a podcast a while back ago about block training versus random training, and how essentially when you have block training, right, you're going to see an improvement in your skills, but if you really want to see the most effective results in your games, which are random, right? Block training is going to be stuff that's set out for you. So, okay, go to, you're going to go to the gym today and you're going to do 50 pounds with your right hand, 50 with your left hand. You're going to do 50 crossovers, 50 between the legs and 50 behind the backs. Okay. Objectively, you're going to get better at your ball handling by doing those things. Okay. But somebody else might go to the gym and they're going to say, you know what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through you know, some pound stuff. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on on the court, you know, in the center, we're going to do the kill the grass drill. Okay. Where you got to try and dribble in every single piece of that center court, doing different sort of moves and being able to change your pace up, touching every single part of that space that we have. Okay. So you're all of a sudden working on all sorts of different moves, different speeds, different pound, like different, you know, uh, your, your hard pound here between the legs, behind the back, spin move, all those different things that you might work on. That player is, is doing a more randomized aspect of training, okay? And we broke down the differences in results when they take groups of players uh, who in any sport, literally in so many different sports, where they would take guys who, who went through block practice and their results in practice got better every single day. So the first day they do their 50 pounds, 50 crossovers, 50 between, behind. Every single day they're, they're doing it faster, right? Day one they do it in, you know, 40 seconds, day two, they do it in 38, day three, they do it in 35, day four, they do it in 32, right? Those guys doing the randomized training, they might not see that sort of, you know, that, that sort of same uh, trajectory of results the same day. They might do a great job day one, day two is going to be a little bit worse, there's a new factor thrown at them, uh, you know, day three, they might do a little better, day four, they might do a little worse, so something new is being thrown at them, but when they get into games, the players who have been able to do this randomized sort of training are able to perform better because they're used to having to adapt to new things, 
right? They're, they've been training to, to succeed in randomized situations, which every game is a randomized situation. Again, there's no two plays that, that are the same, okay? So you need to be able to adapt and to play in that sort of style, right? And if you're only focused on your block training, you're not going to be able to do that. So that's why I spent so much time putting in this creativity stuff to elite ball handling because it's so important that you guys do this, this sort of stuff. Okay, so and creativity again is going to kind of add all those things together, and that's why I think you know it's something that that every player needs to be able to focus on. So that's something that I talk about a lot, and uh, but again, elite ball handling is going to target all four of those areas. So again, highly recommend you guys check that out. Um, you know, and we also talk about footwork and different stuff. I got a question about footwork as well in uh, in that Q and A I did the other day on Instagram, and you know, essentially. We target that footwork when we work on pace and we work on those height changes, okay? So when we're doing ball control, it's not usually going to be a lot of footwork. Creativity, you're going to obviously use your footwork, but we're not developing it at that point, okay? So we'll have drills where we're working on our pace, working on our different hesitation dribbles, paying attention to what our feet are doing, okay? And obviously, there are different moves that you can go through that are going to have different aspects of footwork, but kind of when it, go, when, it come, when it all comes back to it, how well can you do these four things? How well can you can you control the basketball? How well can you change your height and change your pace? And how well or how creative can you be with the basketball? Are you able to adapt to different things? If you can master those four areas, then you're going to be a really, 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 really good ball handler. Okay? And so I don't want you guys to think that it's just as simple as going out and doing ball handling drills every day because you want to make sure that you target those areas so that you can get better at those. So again, check out the video I put out a couple days ago. You guys are going to see a workout you guys can go through that's going to help you guys out. Um, like I said, guys, Elite Ball Handling is coming out on Monday, so be prepared for that. Monday, August 17th. Uh, again, I'm super excited to get this into your guys' hands. And again, if you guys are interested, make sure you follow me on Instagram. I'm going to post exactly when that's out so you guys be prepared for it and hit the ground running on Monday and get to work with it. Um, again, I really think, man, you guys are going to see some results in these six weeks that, that are going to really, really blow your mind. Um, cause I know a lot of you guys probably haven't tried the stuff that we're going to get into. So really, really excited to get going with this sort of stuff. And, um, again, any questions you guys have for me, send me a DM on Instagram at vision driven basketball. Again, always looking to answer questions to my podcast. And, uh, again, appreciate all you guys for supporting and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.